Who did the homework? Who me? Yeah. I gotta go? Yeah, because I don't know who you are. This is my first time coming. Got it. How you end up here then? My son's on the next level, but he, he's not, he, it's not mandatory. Got it. So how y'all find about the class? Because you go to the next level. Right. But I'm saying, what made y'all come to the class, though? He's a DJ. He, he should have been coming. I agree. He just had a lot of different stuff going on. Makes sense. Or whatever. So they talk about it in class on Saturdays. And then one of my male friends, Carrie, Carrie came. Before, okay. Whatever. So I've been seeing it on Instagram and stuff like that, and I think it's very beneficial for my son to be here because he want to learn how to invest his money. Cool. Instead of buying like dirt bikes and stuff. Okay, cool. You buying dirt bikes and stuff? <laughs> cool. With your DJ money? So you do you do pretty well with DJing. Yeah. How you normally? What's your name? DJ what? Vaughn. DJ Vaughn. You get how you normally get booked? Uh, Instagram. They call my mom or grandma. Got it. And what you do, like party? Huh? Word of mouth. So you do like parties and what else? Everything. Everything? So like events and conferences and stuff like that too? You ever did like a conference? No, I haven't yet did a conference. You, so, you can do one? What was, what was, name some of the people who you have DJed for? Um, I DJed for Meek Mill. Uh, I DJed for City of Atlanta. Okay. What kind of event you did for me? Uh, it was uh, Meek Mill has its own day in the city. Okay, uh, in Philly. Yeah. Here. Here. Okay. Okay, got it. And you DJ there? Yeah, I DJ and DJ in the class. Cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. What's up? So I'm Mark Quill, um, for those who don't know, Russell, um, 36, I um, don't go to school, I um, help people build million dollar business, multi-million dollar businesses, um, biggest win this week, had a lot of big wins this week, let me think, let me think of one, and we, we had class again this week, this class. We, we did a virtual last week, so we're doing it. We're back. We're back in the building. Hmm? I don't know why. We just did. All right. How do we know we how we last week? Because I'm trying to get at the house on Thursday, even though I live here, live in the city of Atlanta. Okay. How will we know when class will be virtual? So it's always here, right? So it's, we just did it last week virtually, but normally every week is here. The next two weeks, I'm glad you asked me this. The next two weeks, we won't be here. We'll be off, but I send, I'm going to be sending what to do for those for those two weeks. So like next week we won't be here, but I'm gonna send what to work on. Following week we won't be here, but I'm gonna send what to work on and they better submit it back to me and all that. Okay, so do you have a link um, where we can get caught up? Yep. Okay. I get you the I get you the link and everything so you better log into the members area. All the every week all the recordings get added into there. Okay. So you better catch up on all the last classes okay. in the core seven. Cause it's like we we the foundation is like the seven pillars mm -hmm. of a multi million dollar business. So once you log in there you'll better see Video one, they like two, three minutes, so they super short. Two, three minutes, boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. And then the week, um, all the recorders in there, all that good stuff. Okay. Make sense? Thanks. For sure. Uh, real quick, so what I want, so I want to do something, I want to try something, not try something, I want to do something a little different real quick. Let me see if I can get this TV to work. Uh, hold on. Well, I know how to work this extra. There you go, hold on. All right, what do I mow this? Make sure I get the remote out of my pocket. Okay, here we go. So look, this is what I want to show y'all. I want to show y'all something real quick. It's a pop quiz, kind of. So what does first slide say? Think different. What that mean? What mean? What think different mean? Think outside the box. Think outside the box. You don't have to do what everybody else is doing. It's okay to be different. Okay, cool. Anybody else on that? Be unique. Be unique. Anybody else want to add anything to that? What is it? They said it? Anybody else want to add anything else? All right. So, next question. Hold on. Who can finish this maze in 20 seconds using just your eyes? Huh? Yeah. You can? Yeah. All right. Do it. Well, actually, come kind of show me. Come right, come up here real quick. Got it. Me too. Me too. Hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's hold on. too easy. Come here. Okay. 
So show me how you would do it. Twenty. That thing. Eighteen. Ray, you can't. Show me, show me with your finger. How you gonna do it? Just show me with your finger real quick. Fifteen. Fourteen. You got twenty seconds. Thirteen. Twelve. Eleven. Ten. You don't know? <laughs> All right, who wanna, who else? Who got it? Go, show me. All right, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Who all did, who all, give me a hand, give me a hand, give me a hand, give me a hand, give me a hand. Who all, who all did the same thing? Raise your hand high if you did the same thing. Well, you, you went and said you Alright, so check this out. So, it, it might be three different ways though. So is it safe to say everybody kind of did that? Yeah. yeah. That's safe to say? Yeah. Why nobody ain't do that? <laughs> That's cheating! Huh? Oh! Huh? I just said. You, you got to start for somebody. I just said who could, I just said who could finish the maze in twenty <laughs> seconds. You, you. <laughs> oh, I get it. You said you said that thing different. Said think outside the box. It's a lateral thinking. Move outside the implied rules of the system. And I so y'all y'all assumed that that was the only way. Y'all assumed that, right? Yeah. Why? So why why y'all think y'all assumed that? Because it's usually how you play based on what? The rules. How you was taught. Dad, Dad, I get it. You said, you said think outside the box. Yeah, not even that outside the box. Because it ain't really no box. Mm -hmm. It's no such thing. As, some people, I'm saying people say think outside. Go sit down. People say think outside the box. But it's really, when did we get in the box? So we, we ain't in no box, no, no rectangle. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, the circle. We, you ain't even in no circle. Shapes are illusions. This is, this is. I'm saying we're in a room, but I ain't talking about this. I'm saying people say, think outside the box. But like, where did that come from? <laughs> when did we ever get, in, get stuck inside? When did we ever get stuck inside of a box? <laughs> Can anybody answer that? No. But why, so why do we say it? Because it's a cliche. Everybody, if everybody's saying it, it this gotta be right. It's the, right? The, per, the person who made me gotta explain it. Because think about it. If me and Vaughn racing, and we like, all right, Vaughn, first person to finish, win. Win a meal. Who gonna win? You. Me. Off the rip. Or, check this out. I was just thinking about you saying that too. Me too. Like, who said you can't go that way? <laughs> this disruptive thinking make new rules or a new system. So you got disruptive thinking. Which way? Which way did you start? Huh? Which way did you start? Finish or start? Start and finish. Right. So you got disruptive think disruptive thinking making new rules. I think I know another way. Or you got lateral thinking move outside the implied rules. I think I got one. This the regular program thinking. That was mine. This is everybody's. Everybody, I, I, I said, I said, who else did this? Everybody raise a hand. Who said? Right. Well, you raised your hand, but when you went up there, you said you. I didn't know I could cheat. Yeah, you ain't cheat. Who said you was cheating? 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 Who said you so think about it. Who said you got to go this route? Nobody. Huh? The Not really. The arrow do point to the box. The arrow point to the inside. It ain't back in the Look. So the arrow, Look, that's the arrow the inside the box. But the arrow says, the arrow says start here. Uh-huh. Oh. But who says you can't come back out? It don't say, it don't say one way. Right? Where? You started there. Where, Dad. You know what's beautiful about disruptive thinking? What if you need a play? Like, what if you 
what's the reason to go to the finish? Because everybody has you going somewhere. Like, go to the finish line. We all chasing something. But who says that we have to actually play that game? Think about it. Have anybody ever told y'all like how to become a millionaire? No. No. Yeah. So, so some people just learn it. So, some, so how do you become a millionaire, KK? Um, okay. I can't hear you. Say one more time. Okay. Okay, cool. So, so let me, I didn't mean to cut you off. I didn't know you should talk. Go ahead. Okay, cool. What? How? Solving big problems. How else? Creating a problem, selling a solution. Creating a problem, selling a solution. Okay, cool. So, let me ask you this. Have anybody ever told y'all how to make a lot of money? How do you make a lot of money? How do you make a lot of money? Solving big problems. Solving big problems. What else? Invest what's the, so let me ask y'all this. Because y'all been in here. So what's typically if somebody tell you if you want to make a lot of money, you got to do what? Five what is it? The seven pillars. I mean, y'all know about the seven pillars, but I'm talking about like the rest of the world. Find, find a problem. Before you came here, how, how do people say you make a lot of money? Go to work. Go to work. Save. Save. Solve problems. Invest. Go to, go to emotional, go to emotional jobs so you don't get a lot of money every day. Right, and if they saying people people are saying invest, but they like invest what invest in what? But you read the book, you know they tell you to do this. Like somebody just said, stop. Stop saving things. 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 But it's like you don't know how to do it. That's just that's just cliche though. Yeah, you take money to make money. That's what they say. That's what they say. But is that true? No. 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 Right Why you laugh, bro? Is this, is, is this, that's why I go to, that's why I was like, this is going to be a great exercise today. So like, work, so most people will say work hard. Huh? It's okay. So most people will say work hard. How many of y'all know making a lot of money ain't got nothing to do with working hard? Got nothing to do with working hard. I know that. don't got nothing to do with it. Right? So, it, what's tip, typically what do people tell you, how do you become successful in life? I'm talking about before that. Like, how, what do we typically tell kids? What do most people tell kids? Stay in school. Stay, wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Stay in school. Right? Ooh, yeah. Everybody agree with that one? No, because we're having this problem right now. What? Because hey, I'm just, where, where? he's saying that he might not have to go to college. And I tell him all the time, the only way you ain't going to college is if you already a millionaire before it's time for you to get to college. Other than that, you're going to college. So let's deal with that. Why do you want him to go to college? So why do you why do you feel that way though? Because I didn't go to a traditional black school or he wanted to go to Yale or uh, what's the HBCU school, and I just want him to be able to experience something that I didn't get to experience. So you want him to go to college for four years just because you didn't get to experience it? Yes, he can't stay at home with my mama or me. He but who says you got to stay at home? With, you see what I'm saying? Who says you got to stay at home with you or your mama? I mean, because he ain't going to go to college and learn how to be a millionaire. No, he might be a millionaire before. And I, I'm I, sure he can be. But what I'm saying is, what you, you, these were the two, and I ain't saying you're wrong, but I'm just, I'm just challenging the thinking. This is a good discussion. Black thinking. Huh? I think it's the black thinking. You know how being raised? Yeah, exactly. Or whatever, like. That, this right here. Mm -hmm. It's like you go to school, you get good grades, you get a job. You get a job. Well, now, first you graduate from high school. Ro, 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 ro. It's gone, man. <laughs> You go to school, you get good grades, you graduate, go to college, work, go there for four years, go get a job, work at this job for 40, 50 years, and they give you a pension, and then you live on that pension till you die. Hey, but sometimes, it's not, sometimes so I understand that it's a, you can make more money than a person who went to college and got master's dollars in their that. Precisely. I agree, and, and and even that it's a so I'm so that's good that's a good one as well, right? So some people say, and I'm not saying it's wrong, but some people say it ain't about what you know, it's about who you know. And reality is what who knows you? Who knows you? Who knows you? 
Like who, when they say your name, who, and they be like, oh, y'all know Vaughn, he good. It's one thing for him to be like, y'all know me. Whole another thing if Meek say he know Vaughn. Oh, y'all know Lil Vaughn? He DJ Vaughn. You see, because in this day and age, you can easily say you know somebody. Just the name drop. But it's like, who know you? Can you go in the room? Or even when you, more importantly, when you ain't in the room, how solid is your name? Mm-hmm. Or whatever, because my, that's how my mom is. Gotcha. Like, if you good, they're going to hear about you. They're going to find you. Gotcha. I got an event. So I got an event. Um, check your schedule. Let me know what you're doing. September 20. Because you go to school, say, right? So you got school, what, like, me in middle school? Is that a Friday? If it's, Friday. It's, a, it's a Friday and a Saturday. Yeah, so I got an event Friday and Saturday, 25th and 26th. And um, and if you want, you can, I pay you, you come DJ. Okay. It's all it's entre- it's a business event. It'll be a dope experience for you to be in. A lot of millionaires, people, some people not millionaires, but it'll be a dope environment for you to be in. But if you want to DJ, let me know. I give you my information, and then we'll pay you. You come DJ all day, and then you know whatever the check is, we'll pay you. Okay. And then get you in the room. It's gonna be like two. Right now, we probably got like a hundred, with the team, we probably got like 150, 160 people registered. So we end up at about 200. So um, um, Jalen came to one of our events. He came to a smaller one. So we're going to see about you coming to this one too. So it's official though, but I'll give you my information. But again, like who knows you, right? So I already know we good people. We done met before. Gary, my guy, that's how we met. So you see how that, it, it, now you get in a room with 150, 200 other Black entrepreneurs doing big things all over the globe. Now it's like, oh, Vaughn, good. And you come in there and do your thing. Mm-hmm. Now you just expanded your network exponentially. And then you come learn how to market and grow your business at the same time. Mm-hmm. So you get paid to make money. You just said something valuable that a lot of people don't understand that your abundance is in your relationships. 100%. That, that's, that's it. Your abundance is in your relationships. 100%. And your name is everything. That's why, that's why I, was, I was telling my older son, like, when I was growing up, like, if you were slime, then nobody want to rock with you. Because they like you a snake. Yeah. Right? That's, that was the philosophy when I was growing up. Now it's like the cool thing to be slime. So I'm like, wow. So I'm talking to my older son. He, he's he finna be 18. I'm like, bro, you know what slime like me? Like, well, it meant when I was growing up, maybe it's mean something now different now. But I was like, you know what that meant? Like, you ain't want to rock with the dude who was slime. I mean, if it was your partner, he was slime, you know who he is. You ain't even have him at your house like that, though. Right? But he might come back. Because he'll come back. Or he'll steal from you, help you look for it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Y'all got some of the partners like that, right? They're still. Oh, dang, bro. Like, bro, oh, man. And they got it the whole time. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's who they are, so you have to be your own yep. brand. And I've been teaching him since he was eight. I used to call him Young Fly Intelligent or whatever. Like I used to say all different types of stuff. So he came up with Young Fly Bun mm-hmm. or whatever. And that's who you are as an individual. You can't, he can't live off your name. You got to make your own personality and your own statement or whatever. But when you just said it, sometimes like coming from your parents, yep. you don't want to hear it. One hundred percent. Somebody else. You 100%. Like, my mom raised me by herself, so it was like, I was like, oh, whatever. It took me, like, for her to pass and me to be 36, and I'd be like, oh, okay. I get what she was saying now. Yeah. But I can't even call and be like, I, I appreciate what you were saying, mom. You see what I'm saying? That's why I tell her, like, appreciate your parents, because, like, they ain't going to be here forever. And then when it clicked, you'd be like, oh, my mom, my mom would tell me, let me call and be like, she ain't here no more. She ain't here no more. So you got to take advantage of it. So y'all get what I'm saying? So it's like, I, I meet people all the time. What you about to say, MJ? Uh, I, see, I see what you, what else you said, though. What? You know, you see, you see how it started, Carol was pointing right there? Mm-hmm. You could have went up there and then went back down and then went over here, then went through there and came back up. Or what else could you have done? Went diagonal. 
or what else? Over there. Or we could have went down here and boom. Y'all see what I'm saying? Oh, you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Now I get it. It ain't about working. Think about it. Think about it. Go sit, go sit down for I me. I get it now. Look, it's, there, if there's arrows right here pointing in direction. Mm -hmm. So think about it. But this arrow don't say stick with this. Stay, stay this way. You see what I'm saying? Because, like, I meet people all the time. I was speaking at the school one time, and I was like, it was seniors. And I was like, how many of y'all going to college? You know, about 90% of the room raised their hand. I'm like, how many of y'all going to college because your parents told you you need to go to college? 90% of the room raised their hand. How many people was it? It was, it was like, I don't know how many it was, but it was like a classroom, so probably like 30. You see what I'm saying? But it was all going only. And then guess what? We meet kids who don't, and I talk to adults now, or even kids, they be like, they went for two or three, four years, and I didn't switch their major three or four times. They don't know why they there. They just there because their parents told them they were supposed to be there. And the only reason their parents told them they're supposed to be there is because the gra their grandma told their mom or dad that they were supposed to go do that. And the only reason their grandma told their parents that they're supposed to be there because their parents told them that they're supposed to be there. So now you're 17, 18, living in 2021, trying to fulfill advice from four generations ago. You see what I'm saying? How long is four generations? Probably like, I think a generation is like 70 years. So, you, so now we got our kids, 17, 18, we trying to let them, we trying to make them live a plan that our great, great, great grandkid parents wanted to do, but didn't do, right? They didn't even do it. It's just always been a dream. So they're like, eventually somebody going to go. Now we live in a whole nother world. Now you don't even get a pension. So now you can't even work a job for 40 years. Like most of, this, most of the stuff, think about it. Even with school, I even tell my kids, like, look, it's about performance. Mm -hmm. I ain't tripping on grades. It's performance. Go ahead and do your absolute best. If you do your absolute best, you still get deep. We can figure out what, what's going on, right? But it's like you and I just ain't doing nothing, and that's because how you do anything is how you do everything. So if you make a habit of going to school, have doing your stuff, you're going to have doing other areas as well, right? So it's like you put in a, you go in there and put the work in because in reality, I mean, you really, depending on what you decide to do, you really ain't going to need algebra too. You really ain't going to need calculus, physics, social studies. But you still better run and do what you need to do. Go in there and do what you need to do because it's the habits you're creating. Mm -hmm. So you go in there and you do the best. Do your absolute. So this ain't saying don't go do your best. That ain't what I'm saying. Go do your best. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, only like 10% of what you're learning, you're actually going to lose. You, you, need, you need basic math. You need to know how to read. And you need to know some human psychology. And, and how to write a sentence. Write how to write a sentence. And then how to think. No, they don't teach you. They teach you. MJ, sit down. Sit down. They don't teach you. Sit down right there until you come out. They don't teach you how to think. They teach you what to think. They want you to think Christopher Columbus discovered America. They want you to think black history started with slavery. There's people already there. It was people already there. So how you discover something? That's like, that's like, that's like if Gary been in this building and don't know, ain't nobody else back here but Gary. And we'd be like, hey man, we discovered this building in Union City. It's like, no, we didn't. Gary been there already. <laughs> you know, the guy Gary, we'd be like, no, we discovered it. No, Gary like been here already. You know, we might have put it on the map, just so to speak. But like, Gary been here. But then they'd be like, imagine, in, even in school, black history is once a year. It's the shortest month of the year. And they don't really teach no black history for real. Exactly. Why? Right. Why? Why y'all think they took, why, why y'all think they don't teach real black history? Know what? Who you really are. They don't want you to know. 
It's just the programming. That's why if you go, even if you go into most black homes, especially like our older, like great grandparents, and we go in there and what they got on their wall. A white Jesus. A what Jesus? White, white. A white Jesus. <laughs> why? Because that's, that's, that's what they was taught. Right. Like, yeah, I, Come on, even God, 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 God we, we know God is white. We want him to be black. Because listen, so. We so like is your your taught our right, Jesus is white, but if you do your research and you understand like the co the, the the environment they was in is like white people don't can't even like live, or they're like their skin, a fry. Yeah, and then his hair was like his hair was like his hair was wool like his hair was like Vons. But but guess what? But guess what? Most of us don't what read. Why y'all think they ain't want the slaves to learn how to read? Mm -hmm. I do believe in somebody, but I just don't believe everything mm -hmm. or whatever. But why would they give us this? It's programmed each and every last one of us. Mm -hmm. It's telling us that we doing what they want us to do. Give our money yep. to the church, the 10%, and then you be mad because he drive a Bentley and you drive a Toyota. And here's why. Here's the thing, though. People, number one, people don't, number one, most people don't read the Bible. They only listen to what their pastor said. That's number one. And the pastor only teaches what his pastor taught him, mm -hmm. and then his pastor only teaches what his pastor taught him, yeah. and but most of them don't never read the Bible. That's number one. Number two, most of them don't research past the Bible. Yeah. They don't research past the Bible, right? Number three, most people don't understand like universal laws. So if you understood, you, if people understood universal laws, they'll understand outside of the Bible, they'll understand the power of tithing. It ain't even a religious thing. It's a universal law. It's like if you sow, you what? Receive. You, receive. you sow, you receive. That's just how it works, right? You don't even got to expect it. You got to be like. That's what anything, like, that's why people have artists put their little seeds up there. For sure. So it's like if you got an apple seed. So let's say if I showed you an apple seed right now. Like, imagine I got an apple seed right here. What is, what is that really, Vaughn? What is it really? A seed. Mm -mm. Apple. Nope. It's a what? Some apple. A baby apple. Mm -mm. A seed. A tree. Nope. A tree. What kind of tree? An apple tree. An apple tree. So you're basically holding a mini apple. Bingo. Here, the cool thing about sowing a seed in the universe of the laws is like when you sow a seed, what do you get back automatically? You get back multiples. Yeah. Like you don't plant a seed and get back a seed. You get back multiples. Mm -hmm. So it's like even so it's just like that. Even if let's say you somebody and you you let's say you slime, like you be out in the streets robbing, whatever the case may be. You may get away with it for a minute, but it's going to come back and you go, it's going to come back in what? It's going to come back in multiples. Mm -hmm, yeah. If you're sowing good, it's going to come back in multiples. So whatever you do, your actions are going to come back. 100%. Because it's a universal law. Yeah. You feel me? So it's, it's whether it's tithing in the church, whether it's in the streets, how you moving, whether it's how you put in the work as a DJ, you doing good business, doing solid business, people gonna wanna do more business with you. We gonna rock with him. Every y'all need a DJ, you get with Vaughn. Like, that's how this thing works. Does that make sense? But again, most people, everybody just wrapped into this. People like, because think about it, even from school, you like, you get up at six o'clock in the morning, right? Be at your bus stop like seven or eight, go to school. Depending on what, what level you in, you be up to like 2.30 or 4 or, you know, 3. It depends on what school you in. 12. Or 12, right? No, not, 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 not real school. Like depends on what school you go to, right? So I know elementary school, you typically get out like 2.30. Middle school, you get out. Middle school, is, they, for some reason, middle school is the longest. Yeah, because they, they go the latest. Yeah, because they go the latest. But I ain't never really understood that. Why wouldn't high school go later and stay later? It was, it was, it's interesting. So, like, middle school be there to 4.00. High school would be there to like 2.33. But then it programs you to be used to getting up at 6 in the morning and being somewhere at 2 or 5. So, so like it programs you for a 9 to 5. Yeah, it's basically like life is a big old trend, basically. It's a trend. Because it's like, it's like, what are you programmed to do? 
Are you programmed to run this play? Or are you programmed for lateral thinking? Or are you programmed for disruptive thinking? You said, do you question? Because think about it. Go ahead. What you about to say? Why? Because if they read books, they would have been Bingo. Because then you can free yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, and that's, that's the thing today. Think, think about this, y'all. If more people read, my guy Dre, tell him about the books you brought. You, you, my, guy Dre, my guy Dre hit me up the other day and was like, look, I got some books I want to bring to the class. Yeah. Tell him about the book you got, bro. And here's the crazy thing. Here's the crazy thing. If this room was full right now and he gave everybody a book, guess how many would read it? Five. One. One. He's, he's right. One. And I'm giving you all these books so when people come, you just yeah. get to the level. One. That's the biggest, that's the biggest challenge. But then guess what we'll say? Guess what black people will say? The white man got us oppressed. Oh, my dad won around. My mom won around. Like, yeah. them ain't valid. I mean, at some point, okay. But at some point, we got to be like, when do we take personal responsibility? When they say my dad was around, I say, great, mine wasn't either. Mine wasn't either. Let's figure out how we can make this work. Exactly. Let's, set up, let's, let's break the cycle. Let's create, let's create something new. Cool. What do we learn from that? How to be independent, how to take care of ourselves, how to live without a parent. Yeah. That's one thing that nobody teaches us how no. to live without our parents. Yeah, so you basically just like you take personal responsibility. Like whatever your situation is, it's like if like you play cards, like if you play spades, right? How many of y'all, y'all have played spades before? Yeah. It's like somebody can play spades and it look like they hand. You know, you know play spades spade one? So y'all ever seen somebody play, get a hand, and you and most people look at it and they be like, he don't got nothing. <laughs> but they'll look at it and be like, no, I got four. Yeah. And a possible. <laughs> right? But other person be like, mm, no, nah, bro, I'm just going to throw this in. That's how people live life. They be like, I'm going to throw my, my folks one around. Or I grew up in the project, so this. Or whatever excuse. The black man, I mean the white man oppressed us. You know, we're still because of slavery. Like, come on, man, it's 2021. I get it, but it's like, really? Yeah. But how long do we sit on that? What's up, bro? It made me think about something you said in one of your, one of your sessions, one of your sermons before. You lost a cousin or brother really close to you. Mm-hmm. And it hurt you. Mentally. Yeah. But you said simply, I can't stay in that. Right. I can't stay in that. I think that apply to people lose family. Like, I lost my dad. You know, I'm, I was messed up. Mm-hmm. You know, but how long can it's got to be a point? Or it's like, man, I, I, nobody told me to go to school. Nobody told me to get be an entrepreneur. It's like, how long are you going to stay in that? 100%. Because I tell my I tell my kids all the time, y'all got social media. Like these phones, I tell them all the time, these phones can be a what? It can be a toy or a tool. Most people, it's a toy. They just scroll on it. If I, if I ask them what Pooh Shice got going on, how much time he got, they'd be like, oh, he ain't really got no time yet. They just, he just got a, they'd be able to run it all down. Like, you don't even know these folks. We'd be like, well, what's your goals 12 months from now? Oh, I don't know, man. I'm just, what little baby doing? Oh, blah, blah, blah. You know, he dating such and such now. He just had a kid. They'd run it all down, right? Cause that's all. They, they, you look at their Instagram. You know, it's the IG models twerking. You know what I'm saying? That's what well, that's what's going on. You know then you know about yourself. Yeah. And it's just now. Meanwhile, <laughs> right? You got other people with the same phone making millions of dollars off their phone. Like what? What's the excuse? Yeah. Go ahead. If you ask, if you ask somebody what are the daily trends on TikTok, they would definitely search that up. But, but if you ask them Exactly. Does it, does it make sense? Toy or two. Like, what's this? Everybody can go to YouTube. Everybody can go to Amazon and order books. You can go to YouTube and search. You can go to Facebook or TikTok or whatever your thing is. It's a toy or two, but we get to choose. Most people, they stuck in this. They only use social media for entertainment. entertainment. Okay, I'm going to talk about the homework. 
So most people, they just use social media for this and they distract it, right? But then you got some people be like, okay, I'm going to go another route. Make sense? I'm going to go another route. This is making sense? So you, got, so you got regular thinking, traditional thinking. This is what everybody, this is what everybody got us locked into. This is what you taught. So you got like to un, like unlearn. And the traditional thinking don't even necessarily give us the route to the finish. A lot of them, we being conditioned to go into one of them blocks. Yeah. Because yeah. dead, dead you're, taught, cause you're taught to be a consumer. Mm-hmm. You're programmed to be a consumer so you can go support the big businesses. Or you can go work for one of the businesses. Here's the, sc- the scariest thing, y'all. A lot of, we send a lot of our kids up, since we're not teaching them to think, they're going to go to a job, it's going to be replaced with a robot. So those jobs ain't even going to exist no more. That makes sense? You want to make, make that clear? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was wondering about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you want to make that clear? But they, they got computers, they got computers in there where you can click like double cheeseburgers. You like the kiosks, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have a person in there. You can just click on the computer. Exactly. So when I was growing up, everybody wanted to get a job working for the city. Huh? That's it. And I was just looking. They don't pay anything. So they want to work a job working for the city. And some of them, even if they could work on the, dump, on, the, on, the on the trash truck, that was cool with that. Now, y'all see the people when they come through your neighborhood in the trash truck now? They don't even got the people on the back of no more. They got a little device yeah. where they pull up and they just grab your trash can, dump it in. So that's like three jobs eliminated. Yeah, did you see that video when, when, uh, when, the, recycling, when the recycling truck had grabbed it but then, but then it missed all the trash? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So does it make sense, y'all? So it's like this is, so like, this is where you, you question everything. And I'm telling you, most people aren't like teachers. Some teachers will engage you. Some of them gonna get mad because they're not used to, they're not, they're not trained in how to engage in a productive conversation. They're gonna, so Vaughn be like, well, hey, you, let me ask you a question about that. I got a question. Hold on, once I got you. Vaughn be like, let me ask you a question about, if, raise your hand, you know, respectfully, right? Like how they want you to do, raise your hand, okay. We'll play the game since we here, right? So it's like, well, you said such and such. Well, I was reading this and I saw this. Or oh, for example, the Christopher Columbus thing. Um, Christopher Columbus, I saw this, but the Indians was already there. That's what you said, right? Yeah. So how can you discover something that was already there? Can we kind of talk more about that? Oh, you're being disrespectful then. being disrespectful then. <laughs> right? You feel what I'm saying? You ain't taught to really. Right. It's like even if you're in church and the pastor say something, and he be like, what well, can I ask you a question, Pastor? Well, I was reading. Now, I'm not saying it's just to be disruptive and all like that, but you literally educating yourself, or at least thinking, and you're like, well, let me just ask you a question. They don't really know how to respond because they like, they just like regurgitating it. They don't know either. They, they don't, don't know either. They know what Y'all get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like, I talk to people all the time, and they be like, what certifications you got? I'm like, I don't got no certifications. What kind of, how many degrees you got? None. Now, I ain't saying it's not important to have a degree if you want to do something, but it's like, I ain't saying don't drop out of high school. That was just kind of the path I ended up going down. But it's like, most people couldn't navigate that, but it's like, it shows you, because I'm going to give you all an example. If you do homeschool, the requirement for homeschool is how, how many hours? How many hours a day do y'all think it's required for, if you do homeschool of learning? Too it's too much assignment. A day. It's too much assignment. No, I'm talking about a, a per per day. How much instruction? Oh, they got seven. They, they get, the whole um, day. Nope. Four, four hours. Okay. Oh, seven. <laughs> I thought it was seven. It was a homeschool. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 like four hours. Same. It's four hours of instruction required. Now nah, you actually get to pick your, you actually get, so like, for example, if you do it, you, so you can build your own curriculum. Yeah. Work at your own pace, too? Yeah. How do I do home? No. <laughs> that's, 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 that
kind of like what I'm doing right now with my ingenuity. Like, that, then the makeup classes I was talking about, because I got them online, and right now I'm supposed to be at like 15% on both of them, but I'm almost at 50 on both of them. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Remember when COVID first started and we first went like on, at home? And at first they were sitting and working in one like virtual class and shit, but you were just getting to work. Yeah. Like most of y'all, I know my kids, I speak for my kids specific, they were done at like 12. Mm -hmm. They ain't really had nothing else to do. Yeah. So I was like, man, it's crazy that they have them there all day, but they be done when they're working like three hours. Yeah, that's what, that's what it is. It's part of the programming. Most of the class, they be talking to other kids about being quiet. Yeah. And, and not it's the programming. And again, y'all, I want y'all to understand something. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying, no, no, I'm just giving you a different way of thinking. My job here, it, one of my jobs here, is not to tell y'all what to think. It's to what? Get you to think. How to think. But what, so here's what I want y'all to understand. It's like, y'all learning the game. So we come here every Thursday, not for me to come up here and show y'all like how much I know. It's like for y'all to take this and go run with it and build something. I don't get paid to be here. And regular, and regular. It's like, it's, I don't want to get paid to be here. Yeah, because I want y'all to, I want them to win. Like, ain't nobody teach me this. I learned this the hard way. Yeah, because if you, if you can save one life, I'm pretty sure. Right. I get a Jalen come in and implement KK. She building a business. She building something. Yeah. KK be a million. How do you? KK 10, right? Yeah. I mean, KK, by the time she's 15, she be a multi-millionaire. Is it going to be easy? No. Nope. Maybe a quadrillionaire. She can be whatever she want to be. Somebody come buy her whole. Somebody come buy her dessert company for fifty million. We want to just buy the whole brand, KK. You cool with that? Yeah, fifty million. Huh? Nah, you gonna pay the taxes, but you have a strategy. She got a mom, so she blessed. So her mama know the finance world. But it's like you understand. You build a team. So before she gets to the point where she can sell it for fifty million, anyway, she already got a team. So they are gonna make sure it's their job to make sure she paid a little amount of taxes. So I tell my team, look, I want to pay the, I want to make, the, we want to, our goal is to make as much money as possible and pay as little as tax as, as little tax as possible legally. Yeah. I don't got no problem paying taxes, but I just want to pay the least amount as possible. Well, this could be a right out there. What? I don't, I don't pay nothing. But what if I do? If I do buy something, then of course it's a write off. I just do it through the business. But my goal here is for y'all to go, in, that's why it's called Young Millionaires in Training. You feel what I'm saying? Listen, can I, can I say something? So this is, this is how we create change. I ain't worrying about the, sometimes the room be packed out, sometimes it don't. I don't care if one of y'all show up. Like, it could be me, MJ, Ro, Ro, KK, or Jay. I know they're going to be here all the time. But it's like, it don't matter. This ain't, a, this ain't a numbers game for me. It's like, whoever's going to show up, they're going to get this work. Because it only takes one. So I'm going to give you an example. Y'all heard of L'Oreal before? No. The brand L'Oreal? It's like a skincare, it's a skincare line. Listen, y'all know who the richest woman in the world is right now? Madam C.J. Walker? Nope. Nope. The richest woman in the world right now. Is the person who made that? Nope. What's that girl? Her granddaughter. Oh, man. Yeah. L'Oreal's granddaughter? L'Oreal's granddaughter. She worth $58.6 billion. Check this out, y'all. Listen. She worth $58.6 billion. She don't do, she don't do, she on the board of the company. She don't even run the company. Listen, 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 listen. She got one third of the estate. One third. One third of L'Oreal, right, made her the richest woman in the world. <laughs> this is what we. This is what this class is about. Imagine you and your grandkids inherit the legacy. Not only inherit it, the money, but they know the game as well. Right. So, so what I'm building for my kids is like, residual huh? Residual income. residual income. And it's legacy income. Legacy. So, ain't they technically supposed to be richer than her? Worth more than her? Who? She got but she dead, though. Yeah, she, yeah. Oh, that was the estate that was left over. Yeah, yeah. Her grandma dead. She got one third of it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, she didn't even get half. She got a third of it, bro. <laughs> a third is a half. A third is like half. Uh, so, you ask me, well, how much is that? 
A third is kind of like a half of a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. Half of a half made her the richest woman in the world. She's like in the, she's in the top ten richest people in the world. Is she the first? What? Royal. No, no, she's in the top ten. She's like ten, maybe. But like you the ten person. And she ain't do, she didn't do nothing. Somebody, y'all gotta realize this. Somebody has to sacrifice today for the future generation. Bingo. And her, her grandmother did that. Bingo. Like, and, a, and the secret And here's the secret. Now. Here's the secret though. When you pass the wealth on, you gotta pass the game on too. Yeah. So, like, my kids know, I would tell them, like, look, I ain't just leaving money for everybody. Mm-hmm. It's like you got to meet certain criteria to get access to it. Yeah, what? That's just get ready to go home. Bingo. You got to have the trust in her. What? From, from the first topic today, when it said think different, it's sort of like try, trying to follow, follow the trend, like if there's some new Yeezy, Yeezys and everybody's going them, why don't you make why don't you make your own clothing brand of shoes and then make that a trend? There you go. Think different, right? Bingo. This is, yeah, this is, yeah, this is making sense, y'all? This is why we do this class. For y'all to go out here and build something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Think outside the box. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I just change it and say never think near the box. Never think near the box. Because is, is there really a box? No. <laughs> People say think outside the box. Is there really a box, though? Unless you put who in it? Unless you put yourself in the box. Make sense? Is this making sense, y'all? Yep. Is this helpful? I'm telling y'all, I ain't learned this. Nobody ain't teach me this stuff. I learned it, but it took me a long time. When I was y'all age, nobody like teaching me this. When I was like getting money in the streets, I used to ask my big homies like, all right, I'm getting this money. Like, what do I do with it? They would just, they would guess what they said? No. Nah. Some of my big homies, like my big, big homies. No, this is like my big homies. Like, they like really getting money. Guess what they said? Guess what they said? Invest it. Invest it in what? Exactly. 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 Invest it in what? I got it, but. You feel me? Like, I'm coming out here with a 20 or 30 or 40, coming out here pulling up on y'all or whatever. Like, all right, what, am I, what do I do? And the best y'all can do is tell me invest. Invest it. What y'all want me to invest in? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> didn't know what to do with it. I know I didn't know what to do with it. At you feel me? Ain't nobody giving you this right here, man. Yeah. Ain't nobody in the world giving you this type of game for free. Yeah. Like, you can go to yeah. business school, don't teach this. I got clients who got MBAs. I mean, they went to school to learn business. And... They like, what you teach us is more valuable than my MBA. I went to get an MBA four years. Yeah. Like, ain't nobody teaching. Y'all don't care what school you go to. Ain't nobody teaching this. This comes from experience. Like, you go to business school and learn from people who never built a business. Yeah. Huh? They teach you about what? They, they teach you a standard. They, you the they're, they're reading the book, and they're teaching you what's in the book. They've never built a business. If you go to a business school, you're like, what kind of business you got? They're like, I don't got no business. But the, let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something crazy though. Let me tell y'all something crazy though. One of the only business schools where the t- one of the teachers actually has a business. Guess what that's it? Say that again. One of the colleges, universities, that actually is kind of the business section is ran by somebody who actually has built businesses. Is what school? Stanford. Stanford. Guess who came out of Stanford? The dudes who own Google. Um, No. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Slow down and think. Slow down. I'm talking. I'm thinking big business. I think faith. I think Mark Zuckerberg went to Stanford. That's where he created Facebook at. This where he created Facebook at. Jeff Bezos. I think I want to say he went to Stanford, Jeff, if I'm not mistaken. Jeff Bezos made Microsoft. Didn't he? Let me tell y'all something crazy. No, no, that's Bill Gates. Let me tell y'all no, something crazy. Stanford is like I think it's like a Massachusetts area thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so do y'all get, y'all get what I'm saying? So these guys came out and built. Now Mark Zuckerberg dropped out and all that. Let me tell y'all something even crazier. Let me tell y'all something crazy about Amazon. Check this out. This is why we gotta build some. 
Guess how much Jeff Bezos started with when he started Amazon? $500. Huh? $500. Mm -mm. Zero. Nope. Mm-mm. $10. Mm-mm. Was it a lot? Uh, Asus computers. Three hundred thousand. Okay. How? Guess what he got? Wait, 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 wait. This is why we got a bill song, y'all. Uh -huh. Guess why he got the three hundred thousand from? Stanford. He inherited from his parents. Stanford. He didn't. They were still alive. Stanford. His parents. His parents. They wrote him a check for three hundred thousand. Starts a business. How many people do you know can go get three hundred thousand from their parents? His parents cut him a check for three hundred. I'm. I, I just finished up this book called um, "It Would Never Work." It's a, the story of Netflix. The dude, who, the co-founder of Netflix, wrote it. Guess what? Guess what? He guess what? Guess what? He got some of his their initial funding from Stanford. Mm -mm. His parents. His mom gave him twenty. He called his mom and was like, "Hey, can we? Can I get twenty five thousand?" <laughs> Do y'all get what I'm saying? No. Well, who, if you had a choice, would you really want to get out listen, of Listen, only well, listen. Yeah, that's a, a that's a black folks thing. Yeah. That's a black that's a black folks thing. We don't got to be like that. Black folks are only people that like worship poverty. Like folks folks be arguing about what hood they from. Hood they from. Mm -hmm. And don't nobody own nothing over there. So a funny story. One day after the Saturday class, we was outside, and I, was, I got introduced to this lady. We were telling about the Thursday class, right? And um, apparently she went to Doug on the west side, right? So me and her talking, and um, I went to school. You know what I'm talking about? She was, she was like, uh, she was with somebody, I think. yeah, yeah. She was with her son. Yeah. She was like, um, she was like, where are you from? I'm like, yeah, I'm from here. And she was like, I just like moved all around. So she was like, what high school you went to? I was like, well, the last high school I went to was um, Perrybrook, out of my sixth class. Yeah. But I, like I dropped out in tenth grade, whatever, sixth whatever. Class. She guess what she automatically say? Oh, oh you man. ain't from Atlanta. I'm from Camerton Road. If you if you turn right down Langford and right down the right, that's my grandma's house. I'm like, what they got doing anything? I'm like, go, I'm like, ask your big homies about me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The ones you looked up to when you were going to do it. And, and when I, and if, I was if we gonna argue about that, but I'm like, what's the purpose of it? Like Yeah. But it's like Am I supposed to argue about you? Like, no, nah, I'm from such and such. We ain't had no money neither. We was on. But I was like, yeah, I used to be on Hot Tire Ridge. My mom moved the car because she wanted us to kind of get us out of the environment. So we went to school over there. But on the weekend, it was in Allenville and Hot Tire Ridge and Allenville. But like, who cares? Like, yeah. like, what do I get? What did I get for that? Dad. Nothing. Dad, I, Dad, Dad. You feel me? Dad, if I were you, I would have said, who asked about that? Right. But what I'm saying is, it's like, it's like, because I, but it's because, because think about it. It's like, it's, I was telling my, I was telling my, with me and MJ was talking about that. I was like, it's lames from everywhere. Yeah. Like just because you from the hood don't mean you gangster. Yeah, like I know folks from the hood. And they, I know folks from the hood wouldn't come outside. You talking about? Like, they would not, not you. I'm talking about they would not come outside. So you do you, so, on Instagram with all the guns. So this is what I'm saying. Black people, <laughs> listen y'all, listen y'all, listen y'all, listen y'all. These white these, these these folks ain't saying all oh, man. No, they like, no, I got three hundred thousand from my parents. <laughs> we be like, oh, we got it out the mud, man. I'm from Bankhead. Okay. So what? You know, how much property you on over there? Y'all yeah. see what I'm saying? It's like Of the parents' crib. Right. <laughs> that was paid for. Right. right. Their so Jeff Bezos started Amazon in the garage after getting 300 grand from his parents. Because I, I read. So his parents gave him 300,000 and was like, no, don't go. Why would you go pay rent somewhere? Live here with us and, get your Live here with us and run this business up. Damn. But guess what? Black folks would be like, look, now nah, you're so you hit 18, you out of here. Get out. I told my daughter that you can't leave. <laughs> As soon as you hit 18, you out of here. Why do we say that though? She's buying her own. Because of slavery. That's what my, cause <laughs> Probably. Because, yeah, because we don't want to do that. That's not, that's what we're taught. Yeah, that's, what, that's the problem. Regular, black, what, people, regular black people, like when you, when you get 18, get, 
get out and go get a job and buy a house. Right, exactly. That's the word. The reason why I say that is because, like, you see a lot of days these kids are, be, are being carried by their parents. Like, I know people who are 40 years old still stay at home. Tell mama how you do that. So that's different, though, right? Now, that's different. I agree. The only time they see that is when they come to different classes like this. I agree. Whatever, so that's why, because I told my son, if you ain't going to college or you ain't going to the military, yeah, you're getting out. I'm going to pay your rent for the first six months. But if I pay your rent for the first six months, I'm going to run your house. You're going to still think you 16. Oh, you need to clean up. Why do you think you're going to say I'm going to have a key? I ain't got to tell you when I'm coming. It's going to force you to get on the right track to handle your own business. Hope That's what we think. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but not really. But when do we break the cycle, though? Because if we kick them out, if we want them to work, like, when do we... And here's the crazy thing. The crazy thing. And, and, and the, so, what, what was you about to say, Will? I was going to say, what's the, what's the root of that philosophy, that mindset? What's the, it's just what we've been taught. Yeah, it's a program. It go back to what we talked about. It's just a program. We don't know. We just be reciting it. I'm you either going to go to the military or you're going to go to college. I ain't saying there's nothing wrong with what you saying that, but it's like, that's what we taught. But if you're not successful... Like so, we send them... So, listen... Imagine we send our kids off to the military and they go get they get shipped off and they get killed. And now you're like, dang, now you gotta live with that. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we gotta just start we gotta really start, <laughs> we gotta start thinking differently. Like when I'm out here and people are like, I don't wanna make nobody rich when I die, I'm like, you already made somebody rich. There's nobody in your family. Right. Like we already done that. So we gotta just change the narrative. We gotta start so if you have a child, I'm just asking who you can kind of tell like they really don't want to do nothing. Are you gonna let them stay at home? No, no. So I'm not. So so you gotta. So I gotta. I, my so my son's 17, right? Notice he ain't here. I ain't even make him come. I'm like, you gotta want it. I ain't gonna make you come. But you got 10 months and you walk across the stage. You gotta like have some kind of plan. You ain't just gonna sit around here. Now he already know that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I know that ain't gonna happen. But it's like you gotta do something. You gotta do, my daughter went to school. We but he ain't never had options. he ain't never had the hustle though. He ain't never had to figure nothing out. Right. Yeah. right? So I get it. And some it used to frustrate me when I was younger. Right. But I'm like, well, he ain't had to come up like how I came up. So he don't really got that same dog in him. Because yeah. he ain't never really had to, he never woke he up in the power with like, He's been on cruise, cruise control. So he ain't never had to worry about it. Right? right? It was different. When I used to get locked up, I used to have to bond myself out. I had bond, I used to have to. You see what I'm saying? And I ain't bragging because of it. It was just it was a blessing. But it's like he ain't never had to. Like he been good. Like when he with me, he good. Like he ain't never woke up with me and it's like the power out or he don't know what he gonna eat or no. Nah. But he so he never had that existence. So I be telling him like, bro, I'm like, make coming up. Figure out what you wanna do. Whatever you wanna do, I'm gonna support you. We got the resources, but you gotta just decide what you wanna do. But like you ain't just gonna be sitting around here not doing nothing. You gotta figure something out. On Saturdays, um, what's the name? What's the car? Um, hey. He was saying he was he used to feel like he don't he don't feel like disappointed in himself, but he feel that he shouldn't have gave our he shouldn't have gave his kids what he couldn't have growing up because now they feel entitled. Yeah, that's because that's what because because yeah. typically what we that's what exactly you be you be like you be like I want to give my, I want to make sure my kids got everything I ain't have, yeah. but you don't really teach them everything you ain't learn. My goal is to teach my kids everything that I ain't know. Right. And not only my kids, as many people who will listen right. and do yeah. something with it. You got to give them, like, giving them stuff that, like, you got to give them the knowledge, the wisdom. Like, I tell my kids, there's three things I'm going to leave for you as a legacy. Financial legacy, which will be protected by the trust. An emotional legacy, because you got to teach them emotional intelligence. Yep. No one teaches them about emotional intelligence. Nope. The third legacy is knowledge and wisdom. Because let me tell you something. Even giving three hundred thousand or twenty five thousand, you're still going to come up with adversity, yep. right? You're still going to have challenges in business. How you take three hundred thousand and go to one trillion? Like, if yep. you don't teach them the emotional intelligence, how to you know have the lateral thinking, like one hundred percent. Okay, well, problems are still going to be here. Money does not solve every problem. Yep. And just to add to that, and the cool thing is, it's not even about you having to give your kids all these tools, right? So for me, as a dad, I used to feel like I used to feel like I want to teach my kids everything. 
And I used to kind of feel some type of way when somebody else taught him something at one point, to be honest with you. But then I understood, Dr. Kurt actually freed me from this. It was like, it's not even your job to give them everything, like, like all the tools, because you don't got all the tools. Yeah, right. Your job is just to get them what you got, and then you get them around other people who got the other tools. Right. So like my oldest son, he got a therapist, Dr. Kurt. So it's like, not because there's nothing wrong with him, because of the emotional intelligence. Right. Like he helping them with the emotion stuff. Like how do you navigate... I don't know how to help. I got I hired Dr. Kurt. I don't know how to navigate it like that. I'm learning how to navigate it. So I can't teach him how to navigate his emotions because I don't know how to navigate them. I'm learning that game, right? So it's like, okay, let me hook you up with my guy, and he gonna teach you that piece. Cause I can't. That's, 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 you know, Cause I'm learning it. I tell my kids all the time, you're not gonna get everything from me, especially my oldest one. I'm like, I'm a new person right now. <laughs> what you gonna get from me? You make sure that you get to your kids. Mm -hmm. Because. And that's the problem that we have in life, like especially in relationships. We believe that, oh, this person is supposed to be my everything. No person, no one person can be your everything. It takes a community. It takes a tribe for us to learn from one another, get different things from one another. Like, I get so much from this brother right here. I got a, I got a network of people that I actually go to. So we got to learn how to just build those relationships. Mm -hmm. It's not. Like, I used to think my wife's supposed to be everything for me. I'm like, wait. Well, no. She can't give me everything. Nope, cause then, cause then when it goes to that, you like, all right, this person make me whole, or no, nah, you gotta find somebody. You gotta already. The, the way it becomes more effective is like if you whole, two whole people coming together, versus like this person make me whole, and this person supposed to make me happy. It's like ain't nobody else responsible for your happiness but you, yeah. right? So, what you got, Chad? I learned, I learned how to ride the water bus at like 15, 14, 15 years old because I was going to work every day. Mm -hmm. Walking to the bus stop, doing all that, making my way to work. So my Bro. brother got a job and Bro. he he had ways to work. He had ways to work, but he had other ways too. Like he expected my mom and my dad to take him to work all the time, but my dad was telling him that he could hop on a train. Mm -hmm. And he was... I guess he didn't want to or so because he knew my dad would take him to work every day if he had to. Or he'll always have my mom and my dad baby. Right. So, um, really, that's it. Like, today I caught a morning bus. I caught a 40 minute morning ride here from school. My dad didn't bring me here. I caught the bus here. Because he wanted. Yeah, like, I, I came here myself right after school. I thought I was going to be late and everything because I thought class started at 445 and I still came. Because he wanted it. Yeah, he wanted yeah. it. Because he know like my my work schedule changed right now, so yeah. I get off until five o'clock. So I was like, look, you I'm still got to. Yeah, like, my son. Uh, okay. so I'm telling him like, look, you still got to like you, st you still got your Thursday class. You got to go to. So right. You need to figure out how to get there on the bus. Just put the address in on the bus and. There it is. Instead of catching the bus home today, you just go to the program and I, you know. There it is. And Jalen, since day one, he tap in, he reach out. Even between classes, KK, she reach out. Hey, this is what I got going on is my logo. I'm going to give all my information. He tap in. Like, I ain't reach, I, I'll reach out and check in, shoot a video here and there. But like, I just want to see what folks going to do. Like, like, some, like I said, sometimes the room be filled. But like, most people don't do nothing. And I understand that. I don't take it no way. I know everybody ain't going to do nothing. I, only, I know it's going to be just a handful who going to actually do something with the information. And they're gonna go out and make millions or billions of dollars with the information. I got a question. It's out here. What you got, bro? Like I really be, I don't know if I be too hard on him. I be pressing him too much to like to take advantage of the opportunity. But like, <clears throat> I kind of feel like that sometimes. What what can I do about that? Like instead of just being on him and staying on top of him and you know what I mean, just pressing him like that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just not say nothing and not bring stuff to his attention that I see and let him just. Crash, yeah, flop and crash, you know what I mean? But, like, I feel like I got to stay on top of him and, like, pretty much still, you know what I mean? Like, not really do stuff for him, but just, like, constantly be pounding on him, like, what you doing today? This right. What you need to work on. But then at the same time, I be telling him a lot of stuff, and I don't know if he, I right. know he got other stuff going on, but I don't want to be telling him too much and overwhelming him right. and kind of let him work at his own pace. That makes but sense. But at the same time, I want him to be productive and get stuff done, but I don't want to be forcing and putting too much on him and, and setting my standards so high to where he feel like, well, damn, dad got me that makes sense. trying to do all this. And, you know what I mean? That makes sense. How, how you feel? Yeah, do you, how you I'm feel? Just ask <laughs> like, okay, so the, okay, so we're not, um, So let me ask you, because when we got, I got to let y'all go because I know y'all got school until tomorrow because we got like 10 minutes. Do you feel 
like Pops feel? Do Pops say he feel like he be on you too hard? Do you I, feel like he be on you too hard? I don't feel like he be on me too hard. Like he, he be on, he being a dad, like he telling me what I need to hear. Cause honestly, when, like when I was first coming and I was getting everything, I didn't really start taking stuff serious until like, I want to say two months ago. That's when I really started like working and working. And then I had started slacking off a little bit and now like now that I'm back in school, like before school started, and I made my I made my logo and stuff and all that. I, now I'm now I'm wanting to like look. I'm wanting to go uh, go all back in. Like it's like an on and off thing. But like now since I'm in school, I got I gotta focus on school. So I told my dad like my bitch like stuff about to start being like a little stationary. Like I'm still working, but it's not gonna be going as fast as I want to because I gotta focus on school because I'm missing class. Right, yeah. and I told him to do that. I like, look, the school come first. Right, so you see, so you said, you see, he said he don't feel like. Yeah. Okay. How right. you feel? You, you feel me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, but so look, so listen, bro. So holding him accountable and being yeah. too hard on him is two different things, though. Yeah, I know. Okay, another thing. So that's I'm, different. I'm good. Okay, listen, I'm a business and marketing guy, right? I don't do, I don't do parenting advice, <laughs> marriage advice, relationship <laughs> advice. I'm just giving. I just share my philosophy, right? right. So it's like for mine, that's why I keep saying mine ain't here, right? So I'm like, look, you can decide. Because I, I think one of the most valuable things we can do is teach our children how to make decisions yeah. and allow them to make decisions. And teach them how to say no for an answer. Take, no, listen, let them, allow them to make decisions and live with the consequences of those decisions. Yeah. And you know, right? You know what's so, big? so it's like Jalen didn't have to catch the bus here, did you? Nah, he could have went home. I'm going home. This class ain't mandatory. Right? Because he in the next little program too, but this ain't mandate. He's like, he's just like, he here every class. He don't, ain't never missed a class. Maybe one, I think, for some other reason, but he here every time because he chose to be. My kids are closer to it, and my nephews, they're closer to it, so they got access to it. So you will take for granted what you got for free, and you got it so close. People who don't got access to it, they take it way more serious. Right. But I tell mine, it's like, you get to make the decision to be here or not, and then you get to deal with the consequences of not plugging in. Either way, it's fine with me. It wouldn't be all right either way. So some people, like, for example, some people, they're riding on their kids going to the NBA. They're, I ain't talking about you. I know not you. They're riding, but y'all know what I'm talking about. They're riding on their kid. I ain't riding on none of that. I don't, like, what they do with their life is up to them. I'm going to be straight either way I go. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be wealthy either way. I'm gonna be wealthy either way I go. So I got MJ in basketball training right now. And? We was riding and Roro do soccer. So we was riding the other day, and MJ was like, he wanna he wanna work on shooting. I'm like, now nah, the trainer wants you to work on your handles. And he was like, Well my handles is good enough. So I'm like, You cool with good enough? And he was like, Yeah. I'm like, Well we can turn around and go back home then. Cause I ain't gonna pay him for you to be good enough. Yeah. We can go home for you to be good enough. What you wanna do? And he was like, nah, let's go. <laughs> but he was able to make the decision. Yeah, yeah. Anyone like, no, nah, boy, you going to, going to you going to practice, boy, you going to play D one college, boy, you going to NBA. We like, no, 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 no. Oh, you, you, you going to your tutor and said, no. no. <laughs> this is this is your decision. Yeah. You. you get to live. You see what I'm saying? You did the deal with the. You get to make the decisions. Now, when they're younger, you give them decisions like within reason where either you give them two decisions and it's like either one of them you feel what i'm saying so I ain't gonna put them in no danger if they make one but you get in the habit of like making decisions because think about it you get people who are 30 40 50 60 years old and don't know how to make a decision because they don't know how to think for themselves because their parents thought for them forever and you know what the program you talked about earlier you know how parents would say because i say so or do it because i said so we fell out of the ability to have real conversations with our children and get into the lateral like, let's talk to them. Let's engage with them. Yeah, because because we don't know everything. Let's see how they feel about it. Five minutes. We've been here. I'm going to go. Sit down. We're going to go. It's like I'm a corporate on the cuss because I don't know how to discipline a child. I always have had a problem in the area. He hit me with the little eyes. He got a cry. I'm just going to give in or whatever
and he need a lot more of them, but however, I give him options. Hey, the lady said, start asking him, could you do this? Don't say you the man, come back your room. Hey, could you go clean up your room? But I found out when I said the nice way, it never get done. But if I say, get your MF and then clean up that, she's going to do it because she's going to be like, oh, okay, she put the love. Yeah. 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 Uh, real quick, Rachel, what was, you, what was you about to say? No, I was about to say um, I have a three-year-old, and sometimes when he's asking me stuff, before I even say it, he'll be like, because you said so? <laughs> and I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. He's programmed. He's programmed. He's programmed. Already, like, Not to question anything. Right. If you teach like, them the value of what so they're funny. doing... Yeah. So if y'all, so if y'all notice, like MJ is super outspoken. Yeah. yeah. He questioned everything. Yeah. And like I had to check myself because when he, I want him to. So it's like, but you know, as as ego, you be like, well, you be wanting to because what? Because I said, oh, don't ask me, don't ask me no. But like that ain't really an empowering him. I want them to question it. And like some people who like who may parent differently, they be like, dang, he kind of getting out of pocket, ain't he? Like, no, we're not really. We're having a conversation. Like, we can have a conversation. They allow that, you know, in other cultures. Right. And that's why they are so outspoken and can have dialogue. Yeah. Because they have that same thing. They have different people because they can think. How you feel? So, one thing we do when I was growing up, you know, you brothers, when we grow up, we like, boy, don't cry. Shut up. You ain't supposed to cry. Boys don't cry. Blah, blah, blah. We we talk like MJ and I like talk, nah. What's wrong? No, no, no. We talk about our feelings. Yeah. What's up? Talk about your feelings. And he tell me talk about your feelings. Yeah, I love it. Talk about your feelings. You feel me? We got it. We got you got it. to, cause if not, you bottle it up. Yeah. I'll and then you, to my son. And you I, then you thirty mad about something from when you were six. I had to apologize to my son because you hear that sound right? Up yeah. One hundred percent. It can make you sick, and we we see them every day. We got a whole bunch of sick adults, sick by stuff from when they was three or five. Somebody told them that they was ugly when they were five. Now they're forty, and they still believe they're ugly because their dad told them that they was ugly when they was four. Are you stupid? Are you stupid? Yeah, because y'all growing up together. Like I tell my kids, it's like, look, don't get it twisted. When you see us as parents, you're watching us grow up, too. Like, we ain't, we ain't there. We ain't that deep. It's like we're growing up together. I'm just a little older, age-wise. It's like, well, I'm growing up, too. But like the, the beautiful thing is this, like Von's sharp. Like he's sharp. You can tell he's sharp. He is. You can just tell. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's sharp. He don't talk a lot. Right? You can tell he's super, he is, he's observative. He can tell like if somebody capping or if this is something real, he's super observative. He's a leader. Like you can tell he just, he's different. Yeah. Folks around him know he's different, so a lot of them be intimidated by him. He probably, he probably had people say things like, oh, Von think he's better than us. Yeah, I mean, Have you? Yeah. They be like, no, I don't, I don't think I'm better than you. I just don't rock with everybody. Yeah, that's what I tell him because I don't let him go nowhere since that incident happened. Nowhere. Right. He's so mad. And it's like your energy is too big to be going in those type of places. 100%. You go left, you go right. 100%. That's why I tell my son the same thing. He don't, he don't be getting up. I'll be like, no, we ain't going to do that. He was trying to go somewhere for whatever holiday you pass. I'll be like, no, we ain't going to do that. Yeah. Because that's what he's going to do. Yeah. He's going to be like, no, we ain't going to do that. He was trying to go somewhere for whatever holiday you pass. I'll be like, no, we ain't going to do that. Because there's just too much going on. Yeah. Like the last thing I need, you get hit with a straight on some humbug. It's like, it's just too much going on. You don't need. Hit with a straight bullet on some nonsense. <laughs> That's the translation, right? <laughs> like somebody just started shooting. Like a lot of people be scared. <laughs> no, like, no, like, like, it, like, like, for example, like in public, people will get scared and just start shooting, right? And then somebody get hit, and now they got killed, and wasn't even meant to be like, wasn't even supposed to be like that. Cause like if you look at a lot of these music videos, you got like ten folks on there, 
they all together, all of them got guns. Like, that's ridiculous. That's why when I took my 17 year old to the gun range and he got to learn how to shoot it. And I'm like, you see how you actually supposed to shoot a gun? He was like, yeah. I'm like, how many, like, you don't see these folks like holding a gun, right? Like, you, they, you don't shoot no pistol like that. That's how, that's how innocent people get killed. So, all right, before we wrap up, I gotta let y'all go, we got school tomorrow. Y'all know I can do this all night. Any questions? All right, so this is what we're gonna do. Um, this week, I ain't even gonna give y'all a black history today because, well, no, I am gonna give you a black history today. Cause I'm gonna give you, cause what I'm gonna do this week, cause this Thursday we won't, next Thursday we won't be here. Next Thursday after we won't be here, then we're back. But this week, I'm still gonna email you the assignment for what you should be doing. What you, well, not what you should be doing, but what you had the opportunity to do. Cause I don't, y'all already know, I don't make y'all do nothing. And y'all don't even gotta turn the stuff in. It's for you to do. The black history is, um, last week the black history was Madeline C.J. Walker. Did y'all do the Madeline C.J. Walker? I did. All right, cool. So the, 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 black, the, black, the, the black entrepreneurship history for this week is sent us um, Kathy Hughes. I know who that is. Kathy Hughes. C-A-T-H-Y Hughes. H-U-G-H-E-S. -U -G -H -E Kathy Hughes. Y'all got that? Now, and I'm gonna get um, get on Vaughn on the email list so he can get out of communications and all that. I'm so I'm gonna email you. I'll probably send the email like Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday ish, with y'all assignment. Make sense? Okay. Email you. You should get email. Now, y'all, you 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 got access to the online members area too, right? Yeah. So y'all got that as well. So y'all got the work to be working on, and then y'all got my information so y'all can hit me up if y'all got questions. Yeah. 